Um, hi, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Um, Michael Bagram um, and myself, Dermot Gracebrook, are just going to uh, revise the presentation Michael did at the recent status staffing HR and Ops and Z forum for the financial services sector, which we held on the 11th of June. And um, what we spoke about at that event was the latest on the TES uh, regulations, an update on that and what's happening there, and also on the current CCMA best practice and tips on how to approach that and what to be aware of. Um, and we're very lucky to have Michael here to tell us all about this. And without further ado, I'll ask Michael to start. And every now and then, I may interrupt him with some questions. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. Michael. Thank you. Yes, we had a great seminar uh, with Status Personnel and Dermot, and we discussed the temporary employment services. We discussed the issues that are going to arise with regard to the changes in the Labor Relations Act, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. We're expecting our parliament, the South African parliament, to change our labor law uh, within months. We suspect it will happen in the first quarter of 2014. The industry is very worried, and I know the um, business community are exceptionally worried as to what will happen to the employment of individuals once the new law becomes law. And what we're trying to do is to explore this law to see how it's going to affect employers, how it will affect the temporary employment service providers, and obviously the placement agencies. Now the reality of the situation is that it's not good, and it isn't good to the extent that the trade unions are pushing for the banning of labor brokers, they're pushing for the banning of temporary employment service providers. That the government has indicated that they're not going to ban. So there's the first piece of good news. Over and above that, the government has done a dirty. They have now changed the situation from what took place at NEDLAC, which was the body set up by our parliament for the employers, the trade unions, and the government to sit and negotiate the changes to our labor law. Now, this negotiation, after two years of painstaking negotiation, led to the parties agreeing that six months of employment would be the accepted time for a TES or temporary employment service to place someone at the workplace either through a labor broker or through a placement agency. Now the problem that you've got is that after six months it was agreed between the parties and must remember the business community were not happy to agree but a good settlement is one where you have two parties who come out not smiling, come out frowning. And so the agreement in that particular instance was where the parties agreed on six months. After the six months, then that employee would deem to be permanent at that particular place of employment and not an employee of the temporary employment service or the labor broker. However, when this landed up at the parliamentary labor portfolio committee, they then said that they're going to reduce that to three months. So you can see the devastation from six months down to three months. Now just think of an example. One short example is where your secretary goes off on maternity leave, and maternity leave is four months as per the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Now you then have to replace her because you can't have someone not answering the phone at your work. So you go and you find a new secretary, who you're going to employ for four months whilst Cheryl is out on maternity. On the fourth month, your new secretary, Susan, is deemed by legislation to be permanent. So when Cheryl wants to come back from her maternity leave, you've got a particular problem. Now we've got to look, look at the word deemed. What does it actually mean? How are we going to handle it? And how are the temporary employment services and to be able to convince their clients, the people who are out there creating employment, how are we going to convince them that in fact Susan, who's come in as the temporary employee, is not deemed to be permanent? Well, it's obvious. What you need to do is you need to put together proper contracts, 
you need proper explanations, you need Susan who's coming in to sign that you fully understand that she's going to be there for four months only, you need to put in the proper explanation as to why the pregnant lady is going to come back, and you need to explain to the world out there that the four months is necessary in circumstances such as this. So we'll be able, as lawyers, holding hands with the temporary employment service providers, we'll be able to overcome that deeming provision. And that's why I'm wanting the industry to look at it from a positive angle, as opposed to we're going to have a lot of those bucky brigade, the people who are out there who don't follow the law, who are trying to grab as much of the pie as possible, we're going to try and push them out because they're not going to be able to do this properly and overcome the deeming provision. Michael, if I could ask you just a question on that example, I think um, I could imagine if I've been myself in the in the place that is perhaps not business or certainly not the uh, employment business, um, the 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 four month situation or the three months. Um, you, you're talking about temporary employment services, but the question would probably arise with the example of three months for temporary employment services and then you've got a four-month situation, is why would a fixed-term contract not be appropriate? Because fixed-term contract technically isn't the same as flexi staffing or temporary employment. Yeah. So, so I suppose the unions would argue, is business really hampered in that way? And, and in your opinion, what's the answer to that? And do you think it is a hampered business, not to have actual flexi staffing? Thank you. That's, that's a legitimate concern. So you employ Susan on a fixed-term four-month contract. Unfortunately, the way the law is going to be worded and the way it will be passed early next year in 2014 is it doesn't matter what you've signed, the law will override the contract. In other words, one day after the three months, you become automatically a permanent employee. You are deemed to be permanent. You, in that fixed-term contract, need to be able to explain to a court an arbitrator, um, the CCMA, or whatever body that's going to override this and explain to them why you specifically chose the fixed term contract. In other words, the contract in Latin is called pro non scripto, as if it wasn't written. And you then, as an employer and then temporary employment service, you need to explain why it is actually written because it's deemed to be pronounced scripture. So the, the bottom line is, I, I don't think there'll be a, sorry about this, I apologize. This, this just shows you this is happening live and, and this isn't pre-prepared or scripted? It's certainly not, I don't have any script over here. <laughs> I, certainly did, I, I didn't allow for my telephone to, to come in. And if Michael's telephone is allowed to ring my <laughs> <you're allowed> to <laughs> Okay, so we, we, where we left off, <laughs> where we left off was that the fixed term contract itself um, will be deemed to be overridden by the law. Now, it is a strange concept for the business community. Every business person believes in contracts. In other words, if I sell you a diamond for a hundred thousand dollars you expect that to be reflected in the contract and you expect that on the handing over of the hundred thousand dollars that I would hand you the diamond and you would also expect that that would be the diamond that we identified as being worth the hundred thousand dollars all that will be reflected in a contract and if I hand you the diamond and you don't hand me the hundred thousand dollars I will take that contract which you have signed and I'll go to a court and I'll sue you in terms of the contract. So we in the business community believe that we are bound by contracts. The problem with the labor law is that the contracts are secondary to the law. In other words, if I say that I'm going to employ Dermot for six months and I can give him a month's notice in that six month period, I can't in reality give it to him because the labor law says that you can only give him that notice if in fact you follow the proper process and you have a good reason. 
the, the problem that you've got um, in our labor law is that the labor law expects the parties to follow a process as per the Labor Relations Act. <clears throat> and if the Labor Relations Act says that a person is deemed to be permanent and you've given them a four-month contract, i.e. non-permanency, that deeming provision overrides the contract entirely and it's very difficult for the business community to understand why is that. So just to answer Dermot's question, short-term contract doesn't help us other than the explanation. <coughs> I, I still believe that the business community will adapt. We will understand um, how we can adapt to the deeming provision. We will understand how we can adapt to all the changes in law. Already, the clients of my law firm are understanding, because we've taken this out to them, are understanding that the labor law is there for us to use, and we must use it as a tool to create more business. Unfortunately, the business community out there are panicking. They are worried about these changes. Many of the business community are saying that we won't invest further in our own businesses. They are saying it's far cheaper to invest elsewhere. The returns will be better. And they are also saying that if the labor law is going to become harsher, why should we, in essence, follow this? Now, we know in South Africa today that there's a 40% unemployment. We've just had the quarterly review that's come out of our government. The statistician general has said that the youth are close on 50% unemployed. We, as a temporary employment service community, need to try and ensure that these people, the unemployed, gain a foothold into the business community. They're doing, not only are they good for their own businesses, but they're doing a service to South Africa. And I strongly believe that we need to grapple with this problem, if we can call it a problem. And that grappling will help us improve the economy. The Chinese tell us that um, a, a situation of this nature is an urgent opportunity. They call it an urgent opportunity. I'm telling you that if there is blood running in the streets, that's the time when the business community needs to step in and make a profit out of it. There was a wonderful book written many years ago about that. Those who are willing to take the situation, grab it with both hands, they are the people that are going to be able to increase their businesses, they are the people that are going to move forward. So the business community would be silly to be put off because there is some negativity in the legislation. My, my strong understanding of the legislation is that the courts in due course will obviously look at the way the businesses are run. They will test to see if people are trying to bastardize the law and they will fully understand that when you bring someone on for a legitimate purpose, say for six months or 12 months or even five years, they will fully understand as to how you can overcome this problem. Now, uh, you must understand why the unions are pushing for this. The unions are pushing for the deeming provision as a permanency for one reason only. There are many businesses out there, and I think they're wrong, and I am always telling my clients don't do this, who are saying, well, we can avoid the law of dismissal by employing people on, say, a two-month contract. At the end of the contract, we say, that's the end of your contract, cheers. Or what we could do at the end of the contract, if we still need you, we'll give you another contract. And we'll roll it over. And the only reason why they're doing that is to avoid the advent of the labor law. Now, the unions take exception to this. I take exception to that. Because you employ people on a contract according to the nature and exigency of your business. You don't employ them for two months to override the labor law. You employ them for two months if you only have finances for two months. Uh, for instance, let's say you get a contract to build a wall. That wall is going to take you three months to build. 
you need bricklayers for that three months, you would employ them on a three-month contract. It's understandable. But if someone has engaged you to build the house, you know that it's going to take you two years to build the house. But in case you don't feel like being uh, caught in the labor law, you employ everyone for two months. At the end of the two months, you weed out those that didn't fit in or uh, cause some trouble or come to work late, and you say that's the end of your contract. The others, you then say, well, you worked out good. I'll give you another two-month contract. And that's the wrong way of doing that. And we understand how people have bastardized the law on that process. However, what the TES community are going to do is they're going to look at this carefully and say, we're not going to do something as silly as that. What we're going to do is use the law to the extent that we can use it. And we're going to then explain the deeming provision and the way it's done. So I, I'm very positive about this. I feel that this is going to work to our advantage. We also feel that the administrative um, purposes of the legislation is going to weed out those companies that can't get their administration in order. They'll weed out those companies that can't register themselves, that have a negative background. All those sorts of things will be weeded out, which will leave the legitimate companies and the legitimate employment agencies um, a nice gap in the market for all those that have been weeded out. So those companies that are willing to stand surety for their clients, that are willing to go hand in hand and make sure that the law is properly implemented, those companies will do far better than they're doing right now. I think this is the urgent opportunity. Those are willing to go out there and grab this new law, make it work. They're going to do a service both to themselves, to their clients, and to South Africa. Michael, if I can just <clears throat> summarize what I'm hearing is that you're, you're saying that there is a lot of anxiety around the um, say, tighter labor legislation around flexi staffing um, and the push towards more permanent staffing. Um, and, and there are real consequences to the economy of that. However, you're saying that there is a, a a route that can be navigated for a positive outcome. Moving back to um, the TES regulation, and given that it's not all finalized yet, but with the understanding we have, to prepare for that um, and get ready for that, what do you think the three things are that business should do? Uh, well, the three things are education, education, and education. Uh, we, can't, we can't emphasize that enough. The business community must go to the experts the employment agencies, and they must go to them, get the training, understand what's around the corner, and understand how they can adapt their businesses to fit in with those new regulations. So it does boil down to education. Obviously, it also boils down to an open mind. Uh, the business community need to understand that it won't be business as usual. There is a difference in the way we're going to handle the businesses, and we need to ensure that we embrace that difference with full vigor. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for your time. Um, we will um, make Michael's uh, contact details and, and his website page available on this. And I'm sure Michael will be happy to speak to you if you have any queries around labor law or some of the other issues we spoke about today.